Okay, so let us start with the next lecture that is writing the rate law. Now, if you have this in reaction in front of you, like this, consider this reaction, H2O2 gaseous reaction to give H2O plus O2. So this is an elementary reaction, which occurs in one step only. So this is a this is an elementary reaction. So the rate for this reaction, it is dependent on the concentration of only one reactant here, that is hydrogen peroxide. So to, to balance this, this should be made twice. So the rate can be written as proportionality sign is replaced by K constant K into concentration of H2O2. Very simple. Now, if I write the second reaction like this, NO2 plus CO forward reaction, giving NO plus CO2. Okay. Now, the rate of the reaction is experimentally found to be proportional here. For this reaction, the information is given like this. The rate of this reaction is found to be proportional to the concentration of NO2. Okay, and independent of, and independent of concentration of, independent of that of CO, carbon monoxide. And if you are asked to write the rate law for from this information write the rate law so if this if this way it is asked so you have what can be written the rate of the reaction is found to be the square of the concentration of no2 so here it is given that it is found to be square of the concentration this is the same thing i took from your textbook square of the concentration of this NO2. So if this information is given, you can write the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration. So here it should be twice, raised to the power two. Okay, And it is given also that it is independent of that of CO. So CO raised to zero. It means uh, any power raised to zero will be equal to one. So R will be equal to K into square of the concentration of NO2. So for this particular reaction, from this given information, you can be able to write the rate law for this particular thing. Means for writing the rate law, you need some information to be given. As I told in the earlier lecture also, it is not possible for you to just by looking at the reaction to write the rate law for this. So the rate law, by looking at this, how will you define this uh, rate law? Rate law can be defined as, I'll write somewhere here. This is the rate law. It is an expression. It is an expression which, expression, in which reaction rate, which is denoted by R, reaction rate is given in is given in terms of molar concentration. In terms of molar concentration, remember we are always using the molar concentration of the reactant. Okay, so expression in which rate of the reaction is given in the molar concentration of what? Of reactants. So this rate law, by writing the re rate law, this molar concentration of reactant is important here. And raised to some power. Means how many moles of these reactants are used raised to some power. So this power, this thing, it means that this, here it is two, here it is zero. It means that raised to some power here, which may or may not be same as the stoichiometric coefficients. Means this, this uh, for this reaction, you can write this way. And 
for this, if, if the equation is given like this, I'll write somewhere here. Okay. If the equation is given like this, twice NO plus O2 to give twice NO2. Okay, so for this thing, how will you write this rate law? So this thing, I will explain by taking some examples. Here the stoichiometric coefficient is two, here the stoichiometric coefficient is one. Okay, now just by, as I told that, just by looking at this reaction, if you are asked to write the rate law for this, it is not possible. For this example, some information was given, isn't it? that this is the square of the concentration and it was independent that of CO. So it was easier for you to write the rate law for this particular reaction. But if I give such example, it is not possible for you to write the rate law just by looking at the reaction. So you need some information for this. Now this thing can be explained like this. So I took this same example, twice you know, this is the given reaction, balance reaction is given to you. And this is the data also given to you. As I, uh, I, I am repeating this thing again and again, you need some data to write the rate law. So this is the, in the first column, this is the initial concentration of NO. This is the initial concentration of O2. And this is the rate of formation of NO2. NO2, here it is on the product side, okay. Now, if you are given this data, this what was the initial concentration in moles per liter? I wrote the unit at the bottom just to save the space. Okay. Now, what is the initial concentration of this here? This is 0.3 moles per liter. This is also 0.3 moles per liter. And the rate was found to be 0 0.096 moles per liter per second. Okay. Now, what can be done with this? Now, when the concentration, listen this carefully, yeah? when the concentration of NO, look at this column, when the concentration of NO is doubled, means 0.3 to 0.6, means here there is a change in the concentration two times, it is doubled, and concentration of O2 is kept constant. Okay. Now, what happens with the rate of the reaction if you do this thing? Means you are doubling the concentration of NO and you are keeping the concentration of O2 constant. And these are the reactants here. So what is happening with this rate of the formation of NO2? It is after doing this thing, what you are getting here? This is coming out to be 0 0.096 and it is found to be 0 0.384. Means if you multiply this 0 0.096 by 4, you will get this answer. Means when you double the concentration of one of the reactants, that is NO, the rate of the reaction, it is increasing four times. So by looking at this information or the data which is given here, you can conclude that here it, it, it is in front of you. This is 0 0.096 and here it is four times. Okay. so. It means that the rate depends upon the constant, uh, upon the square of the concentration of NO. Means when you double this concentration, the rate is increasing by four times, isn't it? Okay, so here it means that the rate of this, I'll write here, rate depends on, rate depends upon square of concentration of NO. Okay, because here you are doubling this. So for this situation, how will you write the rate law? Rate can be written as R is equal to K into doubling the concentration. This so you can make the square of this, isn't it? And you are keeping the concentration of O2 constant. Here it is. Here 0.3 and here also when, when you make this twice, it was kept constant. So there is no change here. So for this, you can write R is equal to, now looking at the equation, what is the stoichiometric coefficient here? You are doubling the rate. That is why I 
wrote here too. So for this, you can write K into twice. It means that you are doubling the concentration raised to two. Okay. So when this happens, the rate increased by rate of formation of NO2, it is increased by four times. So this is very clear from this data. 0 0.096 into 4, you are getting a 0.384 when you do this thing. Rate of the concentration, uh, sorry, the concentration of NO, it has been increased from 0.3 to 0.6, means you are just doubling this. Means when the concentration of NO is increased, the rate increases by four times. Okay, now again, what, what can be done here? Second thing, what, what is to be done? 0.3 rate, now come to this, the third uh, row here. So initial concentration of NO is 0.3. Now what can be done? Initial concentration of point, uh, O2, it was 0.3. Now keeping this NO concentration constant, if you double the concentration of O2, that is 0.6. Now what happens with the rate? Initial rate of the formation of this NO2, it was 0.096. Now, if you look at this value, 0 0.192, isn't it? Means when you double the concentration of O2, just concentrate here, 0 0.3 and this 0 0.6. You are keeping these two things constant. Concentration of NO is kept constant. Now, instead of NO, you are doubling the uh, concentration of O2. So what happens with the rate? It was initially 0 0.096. Now it has been found that 0.192 means approximately it is doubled here. So the rate is increased when the constant by two times when the concentration of O2 is doubled. So for this, you can write R is equal to K into twice means you are doubling the concentration of O2. Okay. So when you are dub uh, doubling this rest to one, so you will get here rate is increased by rate is increased by two times okay so why why do i write here one because here there is only one mole isn't it so this is one mole and why do i write here two because there are two moles of n so this two suggests that you are increasing or doubling the concentration these two and these two so when it, it was doubled, rate was increased by four times. When it was doubled, the rate is increased by two times. Yeah. Now, if the concentration of O2 is doubled, rate also is getting doubled. Okay. Now, therefore, the rate of the reaction. So for this, rate can be written as K into concentration of NO2 raised to 2. And into concentration of O2. Now looking at this, what is the value of x? x equal to 2. This is your x. And what is the value of y? That is equal to 1. O2 is to 1. So this information I got from here. So for to get these values of x and y, what did I do? I just did one exercise where the concent initial concentration of NO, it was 0.3. Now I doubled it. Secondly, initial concentration of O2, it was 0.3. Now I doubled it, keeping this one thing constant. So accordingly, what are the changes occurring with respect to NO and with respect to O2? Okay. So when it was increased, it rate increases by four times. When concentration of O2 was increased, the rate increased by two times. So from this exercise, I got this equation where I got the values for X and Y also. Now here, here X equal to two and Y equal to one. Now again, come back to this reaction where the stoichiometric coefficient for this NO is two and oxygen stoichiometric coefficient is one. So X values of X and Y for this X and Y, the values of X and Y, it is equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. 
remember this is equal to the stoichiometry coefficients now this is true for this equation for this reaction it is coming out to be whatever is the stoichiometry coefficient it is same as the values of x and y here but this will not be same for every reaction remember okay now when you make the addition of this order of the reaction if you want to find the order of the reaction order of reaction is always equal to x plus y so it would be 2 plus 1 equals to 3 3 means this is the third order reaction so this is the way you can find out the order of the reaction now the same thing can be explained in other way also okay now if if you look at this if you consider this as r1 this is rate of the reaction this is r2 and this is your r3 okay. now what can be done here i'll write just to be uh, everything should be on the same slide that is why i am using the maximum space here now i can explain the same thing this x equal to 2 and y equal to 1 i can explain in other way also if i correlate this r1 upon r2 what is r1 here suppose i number this as r1 okay so this is your r1 now r1 is equal to k into concentration of no this to x and concentration of a2 this to y divided by r2 k into twice concentration of no this to x and concentration of o2 this to y this is r2 where i made this twice that is why i wrote here twice okay now if i substitute the values for this and this this is found to be 0.096 isn't it 0.096 when i doubled this concentration what did i get here it was found to be 0.384 so i divide it by 0.384 okay so if you divide this the answer would be 1.4 means what again you can write means r1 equal to r2 equals to 1.4 isn't it means r2 will be equal to 4 times r1 isn't it so r2 will be equal to 4 times r1 means when the concentration of this no it was doubled so the rate of this it is increasing by 4 times so this is the another way you can explain this and this is very clear from this data also 0.096 and 0.84 okay now this 1 by 4 and i'll use the second slide there is no space left here now when r1 when i say r1 upon r2 equals to 1 by 4 and from this i can rearrange r2 is equal to 4 times r1 when i say this so this 1 by 4 it will be formed only when x equals to 2 when x equal to 2 then only i'll get this answer So what does it mean actually? It means when I write this way, concentration of NO is two two divided by twice NO is two two. So what what I am doing here? I am substituting the values of x and y. This is x and y uh, x values. So this is your x and this is your x. This is for R one and this is for R two. Okay. Now so here I can write. concentration of no raised to 2 so twice no raised to 2 means i can write here four times no raised to 2 so this thing will get cancelled and i am left with 1 by 2 okay so i am doing the same thing in different ways so you will get here R one upon R two. This is for R one upon R two. So you are getting here the same. That is R one upon R two equals to one by four. It means that R two is equal to four R one. So this is you are getting when it is when it is two raised to two. Okay. That is it should be twice N O raised to two, and that is equal to four. 
So this thing you are getting when x equals to two. Means in simple way, when x equals to two, this is your x. Remember, this is your x. So I just substituted the value of x here, and I am getting here at as of four. Means in short, what can you conclude? When the concentration of this is doubled, one of the initial concentration of this NO, that is one of the reactant from this reaction, when it is doubled, the rate increases by four times. That is the only conclusion you can draw from this. And another thing, when the concentration of O2, it was doubled, the rate has been increased by two times. Here, I wrote here. It has been increased by two times. Now. Same thing, you can do the calculation for O2 also. So you can do the same thing. I'll use the another slide. So you can do the and same thing for O2. So now I'll take, instead of R2, I'll take R3, okay? Because I will go to the earlier slide. What is this R3? This was the initial rate. Now what we are doing? We are just doubling the concentration of O2. So we are interested in this. We are not interested in this data. So we need these values, R1 and R3. Okay. So R1 is 0 0.096 and R3 is 0 0.192. So now I'm talking about the doubling the concentration of O2. So R1, I can write K into concentration of NO raised to X concentration of O2 raised to Y divided by now for R3, what I am, am I doing? I am keeping this constant and now I am doubling the concentration of O2. Okay, I hope you are getting me. Now, what was this first R1? The value was from the given data 0 0.096 and it was 0 0.192. So it is coming up to be one by two. Now, same thing I can write. Now these things can be canceled out, isn't it? So this can be canceled out here. Now I am left with R1 upon R3 equals to concentration of O2 raised to Y and concentration of twice O2 raised to Y. Okay, so this is coming out to be one by two. So I can write here, R3 will be equal to twice of R1. Okay. Now this happens only when y equals to y. And then only R3 will be equal to twice R1. Now to make this very again very simple, R1 upon R3, I'll write it again that when, when I write this in, no need to write this again. R1, I, I'm having this thing in front of you. R1 upon R3 equals to O2, Concentration of O2 raised to y. When I substitute this y equals to one, so I can write this concentration of O2 raised to one. What did I do? I just substituted the value of y, isn't it? Now twice O2 raised to again y, so it is coming out to be one by two, and I'm again getting the same thing. R3 will be equal to twice of R1. Okay. So it means that when the concentration of this oxygen, it was doubled, the rate has been increased by two times. So the rate increases two times. Now, the X was two and Y was found to be one. So the order of the reaction that is X plus Y equals to three. So this is your order of it. This is the way you should approach for finding the order of the reaction. Now to find the order of the reaction, if you look this carefully, whatever I discuss right now, so when you are supposed to calculate the order of this reaction, it can be calculated if the rate law is determined experimentally. Means you need some experimental data for finding out the order. This was the experimental data it was in front of me, this one. I'm talking about this. From this data, I was able to calculate the order of this particular reaction for this reaction, isn't it? Now, the rate law should be given, either rate law should be given in this format, or if the data is given, 
you should be able to construct the rate law and from that rate law we, you, you will be easily able to find out the order of the reaction. So I repeat the sentence again, just by looking at the reaction, it is not possible to determine the order of the reaction. Now, the last thing, this one. This is given in your textbook also, but in the uh, elaborating, the elaborated things. I just put them in a tabular form. Now this, this situation I explained you just now. What did we did? Value of x means value of, value of x we found 2 in case of NO. It was found to be x equal to 2. And value of y, it was found to be 1. So this was our rate law. And the rate of the reaction, it was increased 4 times if the concentration of A is done. Okay. So we had discussed this situation right now. Just now I explained this one. Now what will happen if the value of x, it was found to be one, value of y, it was found to be one. So the rate, it is dependent. The rate law can be written this way. And the rate of the reaction is doubled if the concentration of A is doubled, remember. So this is the effect of change in concentration of A. We're talking effect of change in concentration of A at constant concentration of B. Means what we are doing here, we are just keeping the concentration of B constant. Look at this reaction. We are changing only A, we are not changing B. So I explain in, by taking this NO reaction example that once I change the concentration of A and other time I change the concentration of B. Okay, so this was the situation there. But if only the concentration of A you are changing and you are keeping the concentration of B constant, so if the value of X, it was found to be A one and Y also one, so the rate of the reaction is doubled if the concentration of A is doubled. Okay, now this I explained just now. Now, if the value of the X, it was found to be zero by the given data, you need to calculate it, huh? values of X and Y. Then if the value of y, y, it was found to be one, so the rate of the reactions is dip, independent of the concentration of A. If X is found to be zero, it means that the rate is independent of the concentration of A. Remember, we are just talking in terms of concentration of A. We are not talking in terms of B. Now, if the cons value of X, it was found to be minus one, it's negative. And value of Y, it was found to be one, so the rate of the reaction decreases as the concentration of A increases, okay? So this tabular form will help you to solve the MCQs based on this concept. I hope you understood this thing. So this, this situation I explain you right now, by where I found the X equals to two and Y was found to be equal to one and in that case the rate of the reaction increased by four times and i explained you by this how do we get the value of y there in the example so this is the way you will be able to find the order of the reaction also and you will be find uh, able to write the rate law also now remember this x and y this quantities, X and Y quantities, these are the experimentally determined quantities. And these experimentally determined quantities can be done, determined rather, by the change in the concentration of the reactant. Okay, means if you change either of the reaction, uh, react concentration of the reactant, what are the values of X and Y That's can, that can be done? The order is dependent on the change in the concentration of the reaction. Okay, so when you will study the order of the reaction, this knowledge will help you a lot to find the order of the reaction. So in this way, experimental data, I'll go back to the earlier slide, such experimental data which is given to you, wait a minute, this one. I'm talking about this data. This experimental data, which is given to you, it can be used to calculate the values of X and 
y here in case of the complex reaction where x and y may or may not be the may not be equal to the stoichiometry coefficients now coincidentally for this particular reaction this value of x and y it was found to x equals to 2 and y equals to 1 so this is this is matching with this values okay but this is not so every time especially in case of the complex reaction i hope you understood this now